Hello everyone. Uh, game theory again. Uh, here we will be discussing about mixed strategies. How do we use the dominance property? How do we apply dominance property to reduce basically the size of the matrix? Because if I could able to reduce the size to two by two, then I can use the augment algorithm to solve it. Now here the question is, consider the following payoff matrix of player A, solve it optimally. You may notice the payoff matrix is the same as, as our previous video where we have formulated the payoff matrix. So the same question actually we are trying to solve it now. So very first step in solving is again you have to find out the row minima and column maxima. So let us find out row min. First row minimum is minus 25. Second row the minimum is minus 50. Third row the minimum is minus 100. Then column max. First column, the minimum is, sorry, maximum is 25. Second column, the maximum is 50. Third column, the maximum is 100. So we can find out what is maxi min value is maximum of all row minimums, which is negative 25, negative 50, negative 100. Maximum of all this is minus 25. Then we will find out mini max value. which is minimum of all column maximums, which is 25, 50, 100, minimum is 25. <clears throat> we may note, we may note that maximum value, maximum value is not equal to minimax value. So because this is minus 25, this is positive 25. Hence, we conclude that, hence this game do not have a saddle point, saddle point, which means both the players, both the players Both the players are adopting mixed strategies. <clears throat> so that will be the conclusion based on not having a saddle point. Now, the next step is to find out whether there is any dominant, uh, dominated, we need to identify. I mean, first we have to do, check for dominance. Row one versus row two. 25 is larger than negative 50. Negative 25 is lesser than negative 50. Lesser than, I'm um, sorry, positive 50. This very clearly says no dominance. Then let us compare row 1 versus row 3. 25 larger than negative 100. and negative 25 lesser than 50. Again, no dominance. Now, row two versus row three. <clears throat> negative 50 greater than negative 100. And 50 equal to 50. I'm sorry. 50 equal to 50. And 100 equal to 100. Then 
This clearly indicates, I can say now, R2 is either greater or equal to R3. This indicates which one is dominated row. Of course, uh, R3 is dominated row. <clears throat> and it can be deleted. So, our revised payoff matrix, hence, the revised payoff matrix after deleting this row 3 will be So we will have 25 paisa strategy. Since third row is deleted, only two strategies for player A, 25 paisa and 50 paisa. He will not adopt this 100 paisa strategy. 25 paisa, 50 paisa, 100 paisa. So what are those values? 25 minus 25 minus 25. 25 minus 25 minus 25. And then <clears throat> minus 50, 50 and 100. Minus 50, 50 and 100. Now let us see, uh, check for column dominance. First column 1 versus column 2. We may notice 25 is larger than negative 50. That is, I'm sorry, I should compare columns. First column versus second column. 25 larger than negative 25. And negative 50 lesser than 50. So no dominance if we compare column 1 and column 2. Now let us compare column 1 and column 3. Just a minute. Now, column one versus column three. <coughs> So that is 25 is larger than negative 25 and negative 50 is lesser than 100, which means there is no dominance. Then let's compare column 2 versus column 3. If we compare that negative 25 equal to negative 25 and 50 is lesser than 100. This clearly indicates that the column 2 is either lesser or equal to column 3. Either it is lesser or equal to column 3. This indicates that the column 3 is a dominating column. Dominating column. And hence, it can be deleted. So our revised, the revised payoff matrix <coughs> will be, again, the third column will be deleted means the player B will not be adopting his third strategy, which is 100 paise strategy. We will have a 2 by 2 now. Here we will have 25 paise, 50 paise. Here also we will have 25 paise, 50 paise. Now let us write the values 25 minus 25. Sorry, 25 isn't it? 25. 25 
minus 25 <coughs> and then minus 50, 50. Now let us calculate the odd man. First row's odd man will be the absolute difference between the second row elements. So minus 50, minus 50, that works out to 100. Second row odd man will be the difference, absolute difference between the first row elements, which is 25 minus of minus 25, that will work out to 50. So here, for column augment, first column augment will be the absolute difference between the second column elements, which gives you 75. Second column element will be the absolute difference of first column elements. That will also be 75. Now, let us keep the uh, Probabilities, let me define here, here P1, P2, P3, Q1, Q2, Q3. So first let us define what are, what all this P1, P2, etc. Let P1, P2, P3 be the probabilities of player A adopting his strategies twenty five paise, comma fifty paise, comma hundred paise, respectively. Then let Q three, sorry, let Q one. Q2, Q3 be the probabilities of player B adopting his strategies twenty five paise, fifty paise, hundred paise, respectively. Now, we are already using the dominance property we had already removed for both the players, the 100 paise strategy. That means, since 100 paise strategy is removed for both the players, for both the players, we have <coughs> P3 and Q3 both will become zero. So let me call here our P1, P2. This is for player A. This one as Q1, Q2. This is for player B. Now we can calculate P1 and P2. P1 will be the corresponding augment. Corresponding augment is 100 divided by sum of the row augments, which is 100 plus 50, which is 100 by 150 or 10 by 15, that can be simplified as 5 twos or 5 threes are. This means, see here, P1, P2, P3 means sum of all the probabilities of player A should be one. Already P3 is 0, that means I can say P2 will be 1 minus of P1. Similarly here, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 should be 0, sorry, should be 1. Already Q3 is 0, that means I can say Q2 is also 1 minus of Q1. Now let us find out Q1 first. Corresponding augment is 75 divided by sum of the column augments which is 75 by 150, which is 1 by 2. That means our Q2 will be 1 minus of Q1. Here it is 1 minus of 2 by 3, which is 1 by 3. Here it is 1 minus of 1 by 2, which is 1 by 2. So optimal strategies. For player A, 
will be within brackets P1 equal to 2 by 3, P2 equal to 1 by 3, and P3 we know already it is 0. Means he will not be adopting his third strategy. Similarly, B, Q1 equal to half, Q2 equal to 1 by 2, and Q3 he will, means since he is not adopting the third strategy at all, that will be 0. Now let us calculate the value of the game. We can use any one uh, expected value function. So let me say 25 P1 minus 50 P2. 25 P1 minus 50 times P2. That is 25 times, what is P1? 2 by 3 minus 50 times 1 by 3, which is 50 by 3 minus 50 by 3. That gives you 0. So here the value of the game is zero. When the value of the game is zero, the game can be considered this particular game. Since B is equal to zero, this game is considered to be considered to be a fair game. Means both the players have got equal opportunity to win the game. So that is the meaning of fair game. So in case if you find the contents of this video to be useful to you, I request you to please like, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you. <clears throat>